Anti Maz the Beast. Yep. Anti Maz the Beast. Now we usually talk about everything else, blah blah blah. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna dedicate 100% of this show to the big homie. He is an original solo industrial experimental electronic metal artist from Florida. Since its inception in 2019, Anti Maz the Beast has released three full length albums and three EPs. Since 2019? <clears throat> Dude, that dude is a hard worker, bro. I guess, maybe. That dude has come out with whole records. Please. We've been working that's, on... That's because he doesn't have anyone like me on the team. We've that's been working hard. on one record for, for since 2019. Yep. I'm messing with you. Anyway, uh, if you, Dallas, would like to know how you can get your band featured on the main stage portion of the show, simply email your brother, vinsori at gmail.com. Having said that... Let us listen to this song. The name of this song is Apocalypse. This should be interesting. All right. You got lyrics over there. Yeah, ready? Hold on, let me get lyrics over here. And we're good.
apocalypse of apostle The salvation of Savior The murder of Lana The murder of The martyr of Messiah The apocalypse of apostle The salvation of the The murder of Baseline was mean as that was a mean baseline, bro. You remember that escape room that we went in? Whew. It was my with, favorite one. With uh, K and no. no, 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 it was my favorite one. It, it's actually the one that they they don't have anymore. Um, oh, Zodiac Killer. Oh my god. Zodiac Killer. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so if this That's the beat, sound. Yeah. yes, if this beat was playing, you know, the room right before you got to the last room with the that had all those missing yeah, things. Yeah. Yeah, if that beat was playing in that room and it was slowly getting louder and then all of a sudden that voice came in like that. Oh, the that nerves, the nerves. The, this guy, <laughs> he did it all, you know, like, oh, whenever I hear somebody, so nervous. whenever I hear somebody, it's like, oh, they're a solo act. I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, because I'm like, man, it, especially now, like we're writing, it takes a lot to, to be good at it. And he had that mean bass line in the whole song that just like, that bass line was mean, bro. Mm -hmm. Like that was crazy. And I generally don't listen out for bass. You know what I mean? Like, I, you know, I never do. You know, they, they silence poor Jason's bass guitar. Uh, so that was really, really good. Lyrically, this was, uh, I'm pretty sure, first of all, this guy can write, that's number one. But number two, I'm pretty certain Fairly certain. Let me pull up my. So you got lyrics here. Um, so it's Portrait of Apocalypse, which is very interesting because people take Apocalypse to be. I mean, that's in the Catholic, in the Dewey Rames Bible. It's not called the Book of Revelation. It's the the Apocalypse. It's called the mm -hmm. Apoc Cop, Apocalypse of Saint John or whatever. Yeah. So <clears throat> the term Apocalypse really, in a theological sense, means to reveal. To reveal. Mm -hmm. So like it's the um, ha apocalypsus ha Jesu Christ or whatever. The, the the first line in Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to show his servants the things must, which must soon take place. So the whole, entire book of Revelation is about revealing something about Jesus um, that we didn't know before or whatnot. So. <clears throat> And I don't believe that the <laughs> most people don't know that, and so they make it all like this: like, what's this? What's that? What's you know? Right, and about the end of the world and yeah. things like that. And mm -hmm. I, I don't believe that Revelation, ninety percent of Revelation, is not about the end of the world. Is is my understanding? Um, but if you were to take a futurist perspective on Revelation, then um, the anytime you hear apocalypse, you're thinking about the end of the world, mm -hmm. and you know yeah. whatever. And I guess you can make it work from both perspectives because from my perspective, even whatever Revelation was intended to communicate, um, there is a world after it that, that is different. You enter into a different world because of all the destruction that you saw. Mm -hmm. Whether you take a preterist perspective or a futurist perspective on Revelation, there's all this climax, there's destruction, there's horribleness, yeah. but then you get to like the midpoint of chapter 20 on the 22, you enter into some sort of new type of world. 
and there's presumably different rules, etc. So in this song, it talks about all that has been lectured by those ungodly men that defy the adherence of wit and, wis wit and wisdom, which, and then he talks about their transition has been the reasoning of faith and the revelation of the elliptical desire, desire. So it looks to me like what he's saying is, the apocalypse is coming or has come in the sense of it's the end of the religious world because we've we're now in you know a postmodern scientifically driven society which you know i'm not saying he's saying that maybe this is just his perception but the idea is that the especially among the older gatekeepers of religion mm -hmm. you know the the farwellian institutions which are crumbling right now and other things like they they do not encourage their people to think right They're, they you know most religious leaders that are yeah. up there are are you know foister this this divide between reason and faith or science and if Christianity. people think too much it causes them to think too much it's just too much work 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 <laughs> well I, well the other thing is I, I just think that it it um it's interesting I was having a discussion with uh Steve McCray he's a we're becoming friends and he was talking about how he gets received in the atheistic community because he doesn't say the party line all the time and he, he calls out other atheists and so there's large swaths of the atheist community that has basically excommunicated this guy and he's persona non grata and I was like, well, you know, you get similar treatment in the religious world because oh, absolutely. religious people, many of them are scared to death of their doubts. They will not even express their doubts. They will suppress their doubts. Mm -hmm. So then when they see somebody else questioning something or doubting something, oh, the drone really gets all by a whale, I mean, come on. When they start questioning that, that starts to confirm their own inward doubt. And so what they do, instead of saying, yeah, I have a problem with that too, they go, yeah, you're just, <laughs> just uh, don't question it. You know, like, you, you know, you're just, I, was, uh -huh. I was actually watching a, I don't know if it was a debate or a, interrogation whatever it was and the guy basically said that uh, Adam and Eve fell maybe I'm misinterpreting but Adam and Eve fell because they were questioning God you know what? Good and evil. but because the serpent was was questioning as God really said and basically they went along with it so they went yeah. along with the devil and questioning God basically was his argument um, <clears throat> but so that's how I took the first stand all that has been lectured by those ungodly men that defy the adherence of wit and wisdom, their transition has been the reasoning of faith. So I think what he's talking about is like, the newer generation leaving behind the ungodly men, the ungodly gatekeepers, because you know, that's the whole stereotype of the religious hypocrite where, mm -hmm. you know. So it looks like that that's a first kind of stanza. And then it talks about the apocalypse of apostle, the salvation of savior, the murder of martyr, the martyr of Messiah. What's elliptical desire? <clears throat> Uh, to be honest with you, I'm not particularly certain. So I think if you go here, and an ellipse is a closed plane curve generated by a point moving in such a way that the sums of distances from two fixed points is a constant, a plain section of a right circular cone that is a closed curve. That doesn't really help me. That doesn't help me at all. Uh, yeah. I hate it when they say, I'll be relating to or marked by ellipsis it's like that doesn't tell me what it is though well we know what an ellipsis is you know the little thing where you know where you put dot 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 that's an ellipsis of uh, relating to or marked by extreme economy of speech or writing or relating to deliberate obscurity as of a literary or conversational style which is probably the closest i could come to um um the revelation of elliptical desires as in deliberate obscurity like they're they're making they they're they're making their true desires um, deliberately obscured you know, so as to make it so that they can trick people into following them. Go ahead. I think that that first definition that you had, I think what they're saying, you know, like when we ride the elliptical. Yeah. And you've got the like the movement, like you're going up and down, but you're still cre you're staying within a certain circle. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's that's a good point. That sounds like that's what that definition was. I'm going with this one just because the guy is writing and he's an artist. Yeah. Having an often intentionally veiled or uncertain meaning. 
So I think, th and then that revelation goes, the, of the right that goes very yeah. well with okay. the revelation of ellip elliptical desire, desire. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> it looks like they're he's saying that these dudes, these godly men, they were always being obscure about what they truly desired, and yada yada yada, and now it's being revealed. Mm -hmm. Which you could, you know, shout out to the Catholic Church, but good night. Um, their their desires have been revealed pretty pretty in pretty stark relief uh, and that they were obviously being obscure about um, the apocalypse of apostle the salvation of savior the murder of martyr the martyr of messiah it looks like this is some sort of uh, you know progression mm -hmm. you know it goes to the apocalypse and then it goes to the salvation and then it talks about the murder of the martyrs and then the martyr of messiah and maybe that's talking about the people within the church once those bad guys get revealed it's not good for the people in the church because they now have to bear the brunt of it and they get martyred in the church basically and all oh my that. gosh okay why what did you think i didn't know um it sounded like a progression to me you know that verse that says like it basically talks about like in desire when it gives birth will burn forth sin what is that one i'm, ta I'm talking about you can talk about temptation. Yeah. And then um, you get temptation from desire, and then desire becomes sin in your heart, and then sin leads to death or whatever. Yeah. Like yeah. it's like this progression. And so it reminded, the progression reminded me of that verse, but I didn't understand what they were talking about. But, the, but it said the martyr of Messiah. Right. So that, the murder of martyr. The of there could be the martyr of the actual Messiah. Or it could be this person is a martyr of Messiah, like he's he's a, he's a Christian that oh, is a martyr. So it could it could yeah, be it could be both. Mm -hmm. Which if you're like again if you're talking about like what happens to the little guy in religious contexts, mm -hmm. they they're they're basically the Messiah's martyrs been there usually. That, that's the thing people don't realize. Like in the Bible, it's never atheists or whatever who are hurting Christians or the, or the bad guys. The bad guys are always exclusively religious people. <laughs> so, so like, especially yeah. in this country, you are more apt to get persecuted by people in the church than you would really be people outside of the oh, church. Oh, absolutely. Um, and it's not even close. And like, the metal community has been very, very welcoming of us. Uh, yes, it, yeah, it has. And if there was an us version trying to get into the Christian community, I, I'm not particularly certain how well they'd be received, especially no. by the vast majority of people. Mm -hmm. I remember when we first started listening to this stuff, and like people were like, you ignore me, you don't know anything. Hold on, we gotta plug in Sori's uh, thing. That she was already plugged in, listen, knocked it off. It's always my fault. Well, it can't be my fault. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, they go, you know, People used to say, oh, you guys are normies, you don't know anything, blah, blah, blah. And there was always people like, shut up, they're trying to listen to the music, blah, blah, blah. Mm. They were like very, very welcoming. And if somebody tried to... We just knocked that out. I don't know. You don't know? No, I don't. Move over. And if somebody tried to gatekeep, people were trying to gatekeep us into the, to the male community, and the rest of the male community is like, get the fuck out of here. Mm. Like, ridiculous. But... I'm not sure that if it was vice versa that <laughs> people would get the, the same treatment. The grievance of torn page from our posy rests beneath that ideally bids thee justice amidst the endeavor. All that has been sought through our scolded dialogue of a broken ache that turns of our distaste of <laughs> distaste of reason and logic. So that to me is talking about like the, the obviously the grievance of torn page the Bible, mm -hmm. right? Like people violating, violating the Bible. And he's saying that the Bible would ideally be, you know, call you to be a just person, right? Like as you're yeah. going through the world, it talks about it admits the endeavor. As you're going through the world, the Bible should, and the effect of religion should make you a just person, but you you're not a just person, but, but you're not, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. And then it says all has been, all that has been sought through our scolded dialogue of a broken ache that turns our distaste of reason and logic. So that to me is like the... <laughs> he is a very good writer. <laughs> yeah, he is. But that's like the, I think, universally recognized fact that there's something within us that says something is wrong. Mm -hmm. I think everybody like comes to that type of realization. Something mm -hmm. is wrong with the world. And two, their own existence. Like I, 
I, I only talked, like, I made mention of this in a review like a year and a half ago, but like, I remember the time when I was conscious of the fact that I existed. And it was a, it was a terrifying moment. Mm -hmm. Because it was like, it was so strange that like, I feel right now, like, that I'm here is just weird, man. And that you're here and all that, and I'm seeing you, like sometimes it doesn't, none of that stuff feels very real to me. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I've had those moments too. <laughs> so like, so there's a couple things that are like native to the human experience that are usually unspoken. Mm -hmm. And that's why it says, all that has been sought through our scolded dialogue of a broken egg that turns our distaste of reason and logic. It looks to me like he's saying that, you know, human beings all have this like egg within themselves and then they they uh, end up ju jumping to religion, which then makes them automatically distasteful of reason and logic. Oh. Of course, I think that that's true for a lot of religious people, but it certainly wasn't true for the Apostle Paul. Good mm -hmm. night. I mean, you know, there, there's a lot of reasoning that it's really interesting because maybe there are people that do that though. What? That turn to religion because they don't want to think or try to figure out anymore. They're just like, oh, hey, I, I think that's the majority. Like enough. I think that that's the majority report in America. I think that's the majority report in America. I mean, there are other there are other countries where becoming a Christian is a is a death sentence, right? Mm -hmm. And so. Like, they're not really playing, they're, they're asking a different set of questions. Right. They're asking how to die faithfully, and right. uphold themselves against torture, etc. They're not like thinking about the stuff that we think about as mm -hmm. American Christians, you know what I mean? But, <laughs> but yeah, it's like there's this distaste for reason and logic. And, but again, I was, I was watching this I don't know, debate, discussion, whatever, with this atheist guy, with this atheist dude and this Christian guy, and the guy was explaining compatibilism and things of that nature. And one of the people was saying, like, why does this have to be so complicated? See, this is the problem with religion. You make everything so complicated. I was like, well, wait a second, fam. <laughs> on the one hand, we're these dolts, idiots. And I'm not saying right, anything. Right, 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 right. But on the one hand, we're these idiots yeah. who just are so dumb. But then on the other hand... <laughs> it's too complicated. It's too complicated. Like, well, what is it? Um, or maybe you just want to criticize. But again, he is starting from if you, the first line of the first verse. If you say that is the control and that is the group that he is going after, mm -hmm. then I'm good with it. It makes perfect sense because it's, it's just a fact. Yeah. I love the guy's vocal style. He, I forgot what the name of that band is that BM fan always has me listening to. It's that avant-garde doom metal, I mean, metal band and, and, and then uh, Omega something. Oh, Death's yeah, Death's Fellow Omega. Death's Fellow Omega, yeah. yeah. His, his vocal style... I can style, see that little creepy looking baby thing that's on it. Yeah, his vocal style was a Death's Fellow Omega type. Of, he just had that type of energy. I hope... BM Fan, you got. I'm going to text BM Fan and tell him, yo, watch the main stage mm -hmm. show tomorrow. Because I want to see what BM Fan is going to say mm -hmm. about this. Because mm -hmm. this is a... Uh, it sounds like it'd be up his him and Zonia's alley. Like they listen to that kind of weird, <laughs> kind yeah, of it, offbeat. You know, yeah. Like okay, I was gonna on. say I felt like that there was something that was like kind of like slightly off about it, but I couldn't really put my finger on it. But it felt like it was like like a an intentional off. But that's what kind of gave me that like a nervous feeling. Yeah, and in that like that's a difference, right? Because when we're writing like. You have to be, you know, I'm just such a crazy stickler with it. You've got to be on, like, you can't be off, like, a quintillion like, of a second. Okay, okay, we're going to start this over. You were off, like, a, a half a second. Yeah, but, well, not a half a second. Like, a half a second would be, you would say that we need to do it again if you're off a half a second. Okay, well, what so was it's, it? So it's I much shorter, it's much shorter than a half a second. But, yeah, like, if you're, <laughs> if you're off at all, we always like, oh, scrap it, rewind it. We've, we, oh, we've probably done close to probably 300 takes of, of, of like the whole thing mm -hmm. since the inception of the song. Right. So yeah, sometimes you point <laughs> stuff out to me and I'm like, you'll be like, you hear that? You, you hear how that goes down? You hear yeah. that? Yeah. And I'm like, I literally, I don't, I don't hear it. I don't hear it. Yeah. It takes me a while and then I hear it, but now I hear it. But I like to stop. But see, here's the thing: is like when he goes out of rhythm or whatever, or he, you know, vocally he's out of rhythm. He did it on purpose, mm -hmm. and like there's a there's a backdrop around it and all the rest of it. So like that's not that it's not the same thing to me, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. But vocally, I loved it. 
Wish there had been a little bit more lyrics, maybe like a second stanza, like what's in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, I wish we'd, we could have had some of that because I think that it would have brought more into his mindset. But I'm actually, I'm actually gonna listen to more of this guy's stuff because he's actually pretty intriguing. Well, he's got three three records out. And three records in in what? In a year and a half. <clears throat> this kid is ridiculous. Uh, but shout out to the big homie. Um, I, I I genuinely like this song. I really what are you do. Giving it? it was a very very original song. This is a nine point four for me. Wow. Because I'm gonna listen to it again. I maybe even might be my planking song. I'm not sure yet. Uh, it was probably like an eight point six for me. Um, I thought that the sound itself was like I said. It had like that kind of creepy sort of like. I felt like something was not right, something was bad wrong, you know, and like then it had like that cool beat in there, but then it would like come back in, so. It's got that I, shovel. I, yes, and I think that the picture of the shovel made me more. The disconcerted. <laughs> nervous. Yeah, but he was good. I thought that he did a good job. Um, sound wise, I, I, I was the, do you think the quality of the sound was intentional because of the type of music that it is? Well, I mean, it's industrial. I yeah. mean, I heard, I heard all the, the notes pretty well, and I heard what he was doing pretty well vocally. So I, I didn't really notice anything with their with his production. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, there you have it. Eight point six for me. There you are, dear listener. Use your brain is the moral of the story. Mm -hmm. Don't let no religious person tell you not to use your brain. Damn it! God gave you a mind. Don't hmm. let anybody tell you not to use your brain. Yeah. True. But especially religious people. <laughs> Been out. Sorry, out. Gone. So thank you, Auntie Mazda Beast. <laughs>